until the mail slot in her door slowly swung open. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? And now we close this volume with a story from Megan in Scotland. Megan never believed in the paranormal until it begged for her attention. Megan and her boyfriend Mikey had just moved into a flat in Aberdeen, Scotland. It was small, but cozy. There were two large windows, one in the kitchen that faced the garden and one in the bedroom that faced the street. They usually kept the blinds closed to hide their expensive musical equipment. One night, Mikey was attending a concert in Glasgow and wouldn't return home until four in the morning, leaving Megan all alone. After he left, she spent the night catching up on her favorite TV shows. She fell asleep with her TV on, but a sound jolted her awake around 11.45 p.m. It was a slow knocking. She got out of her bed, thinking that it was her upstairs neighbor asking to turn her TV down, as it was still blaring when she woke up. She readied her apology in her head and walked to the front door. But when she looked inside the peephole, no one was there. She shrugged it off, thinking she must have been imagining the sound, and walked back to her bedroom. And then she heard it again. It was coming from the kitchen. She must have forgotten to close the blinds that night, because when she turned on the light, she was face to face with a woman in the window. She was wearing a dark overcoat and her long red hair hung around her face like seaweed. Her mouth was twisted up into a terrifying grimace, showing the few rotten teeth she had left. Megan knew what this was. Her grandparents told her the stories when she was little. That was no woman. That was a banshee. In Irish mythology, a banshee is a female spirit who lives by the river. They usually have the appearance of an old hag, but are capable of making themselves as young and beautiful as they choose. In Ireland and Scotland, it is traditional for women to wail or keen at funerals. So if you hear the keen of the banshee, she's alerting you that death is nearby. Let me in, the banshee croaked, her strained voice echoing in the walls. I've been hurt. But Megan didn't believe her. She was now tapping louder on the glass. I, I, I'm gonna get you some help. What kind of fucking woman are you? Megan ran to her bedroom and dialed the police. She sat on her bed, shaking and praying to every god she could think of. It was the most horrifying experience of her life. The banging on the window had stopped. Is she gone? Megan thought to herself. But then she noticed a shadow from behind her bedroom curtain. Little bitch. You, you think you're, you're too good? good? There was nothing Megan could do but wait there while the banshee taunted her. Then she saw red and blue lights flash outside. Finally, the police were here. She went to the front door where she could hear the mumbled voices of the officers outside. She was just about ready to let them in when she heard... It's her. It's her. Megan didn't know what to do. She stood there, frozen in place until the mail slot in her door slowly swung open. Miss, is everything all right? Megan told the police everything that happened and described the woman in detail. They thought she just might be a violent drunk, and so they told Megan that they would check the CCTV cameras in the area to see if they could find her and prevent her from harassing anyone else. Days later, Megan got a call from the officer. So we checked the security cameras in your area, and yes, we did see a woman who matched your description. What was strange, though, was that she only appeared in the one camera, right outside your building. We couldn't see where she came from or went to, like she vanished into thin air. For the next few days, Megan tried not to think about that night. Maybe it wasn't a banshee. Maybe it really was just a strung out old lady. Because if it was a banshee, that meant that someone close to her was going to die very soon. About a week after the incident, Megan's friend called her to tell her that her mother had passed. Whether or not it was just a coincidence, Megan didn't want to tell her friend about what she saw. What if there was something she could have done? Ever since that night, strange but subtle things continued to happen in that flat. Megan's wind-up music box would suddenly begin playing when no one was near it. Lights would flicker on and off. The water in the bathroom would randomly turn itself on. Centuries ago, when a well would overflow, it was a sign that a banshee was near. It didn't help that these things only happened when Megan was home alone. 
leading Mikey to believe that she had a wild imagination. And maybe that's exactly how the Banshees want it to be. Have you or anyone you know had any run-ins with a Banshee? Let me know in the comments. And a very special thank you to Megan Matheson for sharing this story with me. Like this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and our sister channels, Hissy Fit and Slay Tricks. If you or anyone you know have a unique paranormal experience, message me on Instagram and I might feature your story. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.